My name is Bruce White. I'm the volleyball director at Coconut Beach Volleyball Complex in New Orleans. I've been playing advanced volleyball for over 35 years. Started in Denver, Colorado, moved back to Louisiana, and played all along the Gulf Coast. Volleyball players from all over the state have been competing in leagues as well as in tournaments for some 10 years now at Coconut Beach. But it was actually way back in 1978 when games were played on the neutral grounds of Canal Boulevard near the lakefront that it actually all got started. Two nets were set up and players Bruce White, Pete Posner, Tim Tungy, Sid Garrison, Wade Washburn, Scotty Bear, Peter W., Paul Bodie, Greg Marshall and Jason Baquet, to name a few, competed against each other to prove who was best. The team to beat back then, although it rarely happened, was Bruce and Pete. Yeah. Bruce, Bruce would keep track of the number of wins that he would have um, against us. Um, I don't think he could go past the hand. So our relationship with Bruce probably goes back to like 79, 79, 78, something like 79, that. 78. Back then, you know, Bruce had a lot of aspirations and, and he had a lot of love for the game of volleyball and, and it was infectious and uh, he had good vision, you know, even way back then. Yeah, he's a, he's a personable guy. He, again, is committed to the game and really, you know, I don't, I don't think there's anybody who plays volleyball within this region that doesn't owe a debt of gratitude um, to Bruce. If he didn't directly teach them, he taught somebody who taught them right. or created an environment where it was encouraged, right? Whether for young guys or, or girls, um, just really promoted the sport. I'm Bruce White. I'm the Sarge. I'm the referee. I'll tell these guys if they're doing it right. I'll tell them if they're doing it wrong. It's the way I decide. If it's good, it's good. If it's out, it's out. And if they piss me off, they're in the penalty box. We've all mellowed, you know, as the years <laughs> went on. Back when I started, this was a long time ago, but it was we were the first uh, juniors team out of Louisiana. You know, they, they really, really wasn't that big here at all. So um, we were probably two years in when, when Bruce started his own club. First time kind of ever meeting Bruce through as him being a coach was through jazz. Bruce had a club back then, and he coached all the guys. You know, he was already a successful, well-established coach, uh, teaching kids uh, the skills. My first interaction with Bruce was actually in Kenner when he came to get boys to play for jazz. It was my first interaction with Bruce White. I didn't know who he was, and he talked to my parents, and the next thing I knew, I wasn't playing football anymore, I was playing volleyball. Bruce had six teams, six men's teams uh, indoor, and heard about the tryouts for his you know, indoor teams. And uh, rightly so, we wanted to be better and better, so hey, let's go play this. Never, you know, never heard about men's indoor teams, like holy cow, this is kind of neat. You know, my buddy said, hey Topo, why don't you come in and play indoor? And, and of course, I didn't want to play for Bruce. Back then, I wasn't smart enough to know that it was, it was good to play for Bruce. You know, finally, you know, Bruce said, hey, you can come out for the team, and you probably won't make it, but you can come out for the team. So uh, I, I tried, you know, the year out, I, I tried out and, and made the team. And that's when I actually officially got started getting some coaching from Bruce. Like my father told me, hey, that's coach. That's the guy who's running things. You look up to that guy, you keep eye contact with him, and you listen to everything he says. That's just what I was told to do to a coach, and he was Coach Bruce. And he, was, he was teaching me things in that first year, that, that first indoor season that I had kind of never really been a part of. Um, it was fun. It was a lot of fun, you know, playing for Jazz. You know, he was a, he was a good coach. Uh, he was someone that you needed in your corner back then. And, uh, you know, we wound up winning, a, you know, like a C division indoor uh, volleyball tournament, you know, with, with Bruce, as our, Bruce as our coach that year. So it was pretty cool. The, the, the experience of being around Bruce in that time, something that really stands out with me as he used to do that pit drill, which everybody knows. That drill isn't about form, technique. It's about showing you who you are. Are you gonna give up? Are you gonna stop? Are you gonna quit? Are you gonna quit in your team? Are you gonna quit in yourself? 
And I think that's what Bruce was kind of trying to look for in everybody by doing that drill. And that's why I've always loved that drill. I mean, it was really the indoor players that started going outdoor. There was no such thing as outdoor volleyball before that, except for his grass tournaments. At that time, the only volleyball in New Orleans was grass volleyball. Right. And Bruce was very into grass volleyball, sponsoring grass tournaments. He had been to Motherload in Colorado and was really turned on about that and so would host um, grass tournaments. Uh, I actually played at Lafreniere Park in uh, the grass doubles. I had never played doubles before and never played in the grass, so it was a new experience for me. In Bruce's neighborhood where he lived, um, he put up three courts. Right. And had many nice tournaments there with him. Yeah. And had, yeah, it was one of the first areas um, to hold a tournament that wasn't at the beach. Okay, cool. Right. Had its own sand courts, manicured. It's phenomenal. It's a great facility. And the three courts, the first of its kind in New Orleans, and there for two years, maybe. Two or three. Two or probably. three years. Mm -hmm. And then he transitioned over to West End. Peter W., who came up to me, at, we were playing in a tournament in Lafreniere Park, a doubles grass tournament. Um, and uh, he came up and asked me, I was sitting with Anna Kikuchi, Brenda's first cousin, he said, would you ever play in a six-man league in beach? And I was like, six-man beach? That sounds terrible. And here we are. <laughs> Peter W. was my coach uh, when I played juniors. He talked me into coming out. He said, you got to come check out this place. Uh, coconuts didn't start off with you know, 18 quarts. But when I went out to Coconut Beach the first time, he was still spreading sand for the first five quarts. Back then, you know, it was grass. You had to play on the grass and work your way up to the sand. So uh, I said, man, if I ever get good enough to play on the sand, then I'll play with anyone. When we started, it was only five nets and a softball field. But That's what I was saying. And I, was, and I was still playing on the grass. I had to yeah. play on the grass, too. That's right. <laughs> But that's the start of it. That's where it all the building blocks of it all came from. Well, it was phenomenal for me for 8,000 reasons. And one is it was around the corner from my house. I'll never forget when he told me where he was putting it because I lived on the lakefront and it was right there. And I worked at the first financial bank, which was at 101 West Robert E. Lee, which is now that auction of urgent care that you have to pass to get there. You know, I remember one guy telling me one time, man, there's beach volleyball in Louisiana. And it, it, yeah, yeah. But little did they know, we had a great complex. It was a stepping stone for beach volleyball in the city. I mean, like I said, before Coconut Beach, there was no such thing as beach volleyball in this era. You saw it on TV, and then you'd go to the coast, and you'd see a few people setting up a net on the beach. But as far as having it here, I think it was huge. I mean, like I said, nobody knew what beach volleyball was. Nobody played beach volleyball right. until Coconut Beach opened. got together and we started getting out there and, and playing organized and, and practicing, you know, actually doing some, some actual practicing and, and some pickup games till late in the night. We go out there to train when I was trying, when coming from B to A to double A. We go out there every day after school, try to train during the summer day, we play 24-7. I know, and it's not fair to represent that it would be just guys. These were, right. from the onset, there were women's teams, um, and that had a pretty strong vibe to it as well.
But Bruce has a real talent of marketing the sport and really getting people involved and making the leagues work. You know, at first, Bruce had to come up with like themes to get people to go out there. So the way he was touting it was that it was an instructional league. You know, so a lot of people didn't know how to play volleyball. It's not like it is today where you have so many people that already know how to play are, are already exposed to the sport. They played picnic ball or they played jungle ball or, you know, whatever. So he had one night that was medical night and one night that was legal night. And then there was another night where it was just us, you know, that played or, and it was, it worked out really well. I mean, like, you know, they had people that would have corporate sponsorships and for them, it was a night out, you know, and it, the way he encouraged us was there would be a clinic before which he has now. Uh, oh yes, we all did clinics. <laughs> and so he would split it up to whatever your best skill was. Like I would do setting, somebody else would do passing, somebody would do serving, something like that. So he would, you know, break it off so that it was a little more manageable and they could actually learn some skills. We've always wanted to be better and better and better. And he pushed us to be better. And then as referees, it would be an ongoing instructional league so that at any time you'd hop off the stand and, well, there wasn't stands at first. So you'd just walk over <laughs> and, just, and just give them instruction or line them up on serve, receive, or you know, show them how to set or show them how to serve or whatever. And that, that was one of the biggest selling points that he had. We were trained by him to basically um, continue the coaching throughout the league. So as the teams are playing, you know, you've seen Bruce stop the game and say, you know, you need to do this, or you should be doing that, or you're not blocking right, or you're not, you're not jumping right, or, you know, it was things like that. You would also try to uh, help the teams as we go along through the league. And that's what makes us good, is that we're not just there because, hey, they paid whatever these people, they matter. We want them to stay. We want them to continue to love our sport. After we played late at night and after midnight, most of the time we get through playing, then of course, you know, it was, it was time to go out. If you look over here, these people are not here to really play volleyball only. They're here to party. That is unique. The winning here is being here. The winning isn't whether you win or lose on the court. It's being sitting here on a sand court, having a couple of cocktails with a bunch of friends. Friend. Because it was the first thing in New Orleans, period, like that, it was the coolest thing ever. And he said, one day this is going to be a great place. And, you know, th back then, beach volleyball was not that big of a deal. Like, not that many people had heard of it. I mean, this was 1988, you know, like right on the precipice. He was right. He became a, quite a phenomenal place. When I think of Coconut Beach, I don't know why. If the, the, what comes to mind was the first time the AVP stopped. Sports Network presents Pro Beach Volleyball. This is the first time the tour has stopped in New Orleans, and for the players and Sinjin, they like it. That was cool. Yeah. I mean, this was that was our home. The AVP came home to us. That was monumental. That was in 1990. I think it was actually April 21st. And um, not that I remember the date or anything. <laughs> Dig. It's in. One of the best points of the match is right there. Well, most teams serve Mike Dodd simply because of Hovland's quickness and jumping ability. Mike Dodd with a hit, and once again, Randy Stokla stuff blocks it. That'll just about wrap it up here from Coconut Beach for Chris Marlowe, who, as we speak, is already headed for Bourbon Street. I'm Lynn Shackelford saying so long from New Orleans, Louisiana. We're going to go to a special edition of Newsnight. We understand it will be a two-hour edition. It'll be hosted by Aaron Brown. And again, this is 24-hour live coverage. So we'll be back again with more on Katrina tomorrow night. Aaron. Larry, thank you. It's nice to see you, even under bad circumstances. Good evening again, everyone. As Larry said, this is a two-hour edition of Newsnight. Katrina, as most of you know, has become a monster of a hurricane. We are facing a storm uh, that most of us have feared. I do not want to create panic, 
but I do want the citizens to understand that this is very serious. If Katrina stays on its current course and keeps its current power, it will be worse than the two other Category 5 hurricanes that made landfall. Camille is of course, I drove out there right after Katrina, and it was just wood, as far as I can see. Every thing out there, all he saw was wood. We came back from Katrina, it would have been real easy just to say forget it. I mean, it was, it was a disaster. My house was fine and my job was fine and, and I appreciate the people that went through hell. But I, you know, when my sister called me and she said, how are you doing in New Orleans? I said, I'm just so bummed out because Coconut Beach isn't open. <laughs> and then, you know, the whole deal with finally having to shut down. For the past 25 years, Coconut Beach has operated at West End in New Orleans, but had to close their doors in January to allow the Army Corps of Engineers to use the land for hurricane protection work along the 17th Street Canal. I mean, everybody, everybody was in shock, basically, when Bruce first brought up, they're taking, they're taking the land, they're taking Coconut Beach. You know, everybody's like, why? I mean, that pumping station was a ways down. Why, why do you need that? Bruce lived through all of these ups and downs and, you know, all these years thinking, man, I'm doing this. You know, I have this great love for it. I don't have any resource, no one helping me toe the line. And uh, he just continued to do it. And if he hadn't had that, that fortitude and desire, you know, that passion for it, you know, we would have fallen off the map. That is the one thing I would love to give Bruce all the credit for, that people do not. And it's no matter what happened, he always kept it going. Didn't need just one person. What built Second Coconut was Bruce's desire to keep the place going. Obviously, it should never go away. A local institution it is, and now it's going to be a major part of revitalization in Jefferson Parish. That's right, Coconut Beach is moving to Kinner, and it's expected to draw thousands of people every week. WDSU's Patrick Crawford explains it's projected to be a big economic boost. There was a groundbreaking today in Kenner that will make volleyball players and enthusiasts around the country very happy. The Kenner City Council and the Coconut Beach officials announced the building of a new Coconut Beach volleyball complex at 100 Ring Road in Kenner. I mean, I don't remember he talked to he talked to uh, City Park about possibly going there and other options, you know, and then you know finally ended up in Kenner. But uh, it was never the same. It was ne this is the closest thing to the original Coconut Beach, what he has now. Yeah. Honestly, you know. Well, it's a, it's, it, volleyball is a social sport, too, you know, and lots of people play it. You don't really have to be an A player, or open player, you know, to enjoy the sport. So when it first started, it was really cliquish. It was mostly professional people, uh, you know, doctors, lawyers, judges that played beach volleyball. It was, a, it was a rich man's sport. We've kind of broken those barriers down and made it uh, where it's, uh, it's easy for a beach bum to, to thrive. The reason I loved Coconut Beach so much was because it was a free social club without the distinction between social class. So it allowed so many walks of life to meet and befriend each other on an even playing field. I mean, immediately it was like family. I, I, I don't know how else to put it because there were a lot of people that we knew each other and then other people we had, no, had never met before. But yet we all just clicked and, you know, we either ref or we played together or played against each other and we were still all friends. And you would never meet these people. You know, at the time I was a student and I was playing with a doctor who was Nick Frugge, you know, and I mean, in life that wouldn't normally happen. Right, and we come from all walks of life. It doesn't matter what we do, who we are. You know, you can be a garbage man, it doesn't matter. And you can, you can sit there and dig ditches, you can work construction. It doesn't matter who, you can be a doctor, you know, Peter. You know, you can be a school teacher, Debbie Ken and Laura. It doesn't matter who you are, we don't care. We don't sit there and judge you by what you do in life. We don't even judge you by how good you are. We just all want to have a good time out here and have fun. And that's the, that's the greatest thing about this place. It's the greatest thing about what he built for this community. Oh man, oh me and Bruce used to knock heads. Oh my God, we used to knock heads. 
And even though we may have some fights you know, with each other, you know, we're still family. Uh, when somebody's down, we, we pull together. All right, we're going to go to uh, Jeff Wilson, member of Team uh, Pinky Hat. Uh, what are we looking to do here to get the victory in this next game, Jeff? I think, honestly, we're looking to score more points than they do when time expires, and I think that we should do it. What is the time limit on this game, if we're worried about the expiration of time? Probably about the time it takes me to run out of beer, which I'll need another beer, and it'll be over. Oh, oh look at who he is. Hey, everybody, it's Bruce. Hey, hey Bruce. Bruce. Bruce, where's the bathroom? Bruce, what are we playing to? Bruce, what are we playing to? Who's, how many teams are making two? You know, if you stop and you just look at the big picture and you think about the sport and how much fun it's been and how much it's, uh, it's given to you, with not only health benefits, but socially. Um, this is home. Can't say it any different. This is home. I can't think of a... Uh a more idyllic day than being on the beach on a day like this, bright sunshine, cool, and just enjoying being outside and working out and right. enjoying it and enjoying it with your friends. Right, exactly. I've enjoyed my almost 30 years of being out here, and he has given to us a place to go, a place of comfort, a place that we know everyone and everybody knows us. And, you know, since then, I mean, he's, you know, helped volleyball grow tremendously. And I know it's his dream that, you know, built it and they all came, you know, so. You know, beach volleyball is being offered in four universities in the state of Louisiana, and we don't have a beach. <laughs> it's pretty darn incredible. All of that can, can funnel back down the, to, to Bruce White. You know, I think Bruce's commitment has been to the game and his love of the game and fostering that. Everything from AVP tournaments down, right, um, to grassroots high school kids um, playing sand volleyball and promoting it. And really the first person to hold clinics and to teach league clinics and to do those kind of things. That really speaks to his love of the game and his respect of the game. Um, regardless of what was going on with Katrina or sites or anything else. So I think that's kind of the overarching piece is that I, I think we all owe a debt to Bruce, his vision and his commitment to raising the level of the game and, to, and really opening it up, not just to elite athletes, but to people who would, at the end of a work day, want to go out and play in a league. Right and make right. it fun. Man, bottom line is, if it wasn't for Bruce White, volleyball wouldn't be where it was right now in this area, period. Period, period, end the sentence, end the story. I mean, that's the honest to God truth. There would be, volleyball wouldn't be nowhere what it was, what it is right now without him. Yeah, I mean, what would I want to say to you, Bruce, that I haven't said a thousand times before, huh, brother? You, know, you think about, I was just talking to a, some guys today, you know, we're at your, your complex, and uh, all the fights that we've had, you know, and the way we were able to come together after those fights. Uh, I still consider you my friend. You're like my, you know, you're old enough to be my dad, but you're like my big brother. You've always been like a big brother to me, and, uh, you know, I thank God every day that, uh, I, that you are in my life, brother. So, uh, happy 40th, Bruce, and uh, I love you, man. Bruce White, congratulations to you. It's been a great 40 years. I hope this tradition continues, that we are playing at your complex and that you continue to bring in new, new people and um, all this talent, and I surely do appreciate it. Thanks for everything. Thank you so much for all you've done, and thank you for all the lives that you've helped doing it. It's not just about the sport, but about the social aspect. It has been phenomenal. I have, as you know, stuck with you the entire time, even in Slidell, and there was nothing easy about that. <laughs> that place was hard to get to, and I just really appreciate it, and I know that it's much more than volleyball that has been going on, and I appreciate everything you've done. Bruce White, congratulations, buddy. It's, I cannot believe it's been 40 years. I've been with you almost, almost the entire 40, for a long time. Uh, like I just mentioned earlier, whether it shows up on, on, on the film or not, but uh, we've knocked heads a few times. And, and I mean, I can come up with stories with me and you would knock heads. But uh, man, look, just congratulations, 40 years, Lova. It's freaking awesome, man. 
keep it up. 40 more. I just want to say thanks for all the years. I mean, at first, you know, it was competitive, but Bruce turned out to be um, very good friends, and he's always supported Peter and I. And, and I would just say thank you for the opportunity and thank you for your incredible vision um, to see what this could become in a place that wasn't the West Coast, um, in a place that wasn't even the East Coast, um, and it wasn't even truly the Gulf Coast. Um, but your vision and your passion for the sport um, raised all of us. So thank you very much. Hey, you know what, Bruce? As much shit as we've been through, I love you. Always will. Happy 40th.